Scott from Scott's Animal Adventures and today we will be looking at my Western Hognose Snake setup. This is going to be a bioactive setup, um, so I do have a clean up crew in there and I do have live plants. So let's jump into it. First things first, let's look at heating and lighting. So for heating and lighting, I have a Microclimate B2 Pulse Digital Thermostat. This is a thermostat that can be used with ceramic heat emitters and it is a normal range. They do have a high range one which can be used for animals that need a higher heat, um, so up to 45 degrees. But this is just a normal one and I've got it set up to be around 30 to 32 in the basking zone, which I monitor with an infrared heat gun. Um, as we move across, this is the hot ambient um, combo meter, so it shows me the humidity and it shows me the temperature of the back corner where the heat is. This is the substrate measurement of temperature for the hot side. This is a combo meter for the front at the top. Um, the temperature is normally a little bit warmer than the actual ambient but I like it because it gives me the humidity and it gives me the real um, high up temperature. So at the moment you can see it's 26 degrees and 55% humidity. Moving across this is the cool side substrate temperature this is right down where the hognose would be burrowing so I can monitor that and I also have another combo meter for the back um, which I'm looking to fix this is not reading accurately and unfortunately this is something that can happen with the Chinese generic uh, combo meters so I wanted to leave this in so people can be aware um, you can't always trust them you've got to sort of keep an eye you can't just set it up and leave it and as you can see I've made little pockets and recessed these into the front fascia and I've also got this lovely plaque which I accidentally bent when I was putting it on the new tank this is actually an upgraded tank and the previous tank is over here which is a Zoomed 20 gallon tank I still had this bioactive but I don't feel like it is suitable for an adult hog nose so I've upgraded to a two foot by two foot by two foot. Um, my female is quite nervous, so people would say uh, two foot cubed for a male, uh, for a male, and three foot cubed, uh, not cubed, but three foot by two foot by two foot for a female. And that is purely and simply to give the animal its full body length to stretch out um, at the front of the viv. Um, as you can see, I use these rubber wedges and these will keep the glass in place um, and I've also installed an extra um, plinth at the front which I've sealed with silicon um, so it's all connected and this basically gives me the opportunity to do deeper substrate which is the reason I also have my plant pot at the back moving into the Viv you can see that we have a white python ceramic heat emitter this is a really good piece of kit and you can buy it as a kit with the shield, the cable and the ceramic itself. Um, in there at the moment I have a 100 watt but for this size tank you wouldn't really need to go that high. Um, moving across you've got the Pro T5 Shade Dweller 7% UVB from Arcadia. This is an absolutely brilliant lamp for most snakes. Um, you want a basking distance of around 12 inches or slightly more. Um, being a fossorial species, I'm not too worried about the UVI at the basking zone, which is down on the floor, but I do want to provide a level of UV. And I've also got this piece of wood in here, which I'm looking for a better one, just to give a little bit more climbing opportunity. And then right at the top, you can see I've got the Jungle Dawn LED. This one is the, 15 watt I believe it is 290 millimeters long and it is the smallest of the jungle dawn LED bars the good thing about the Pro T5 and the jungle dawn is that you can connect them up to each other and create a comprehensive lighting setup with only one plug which I really really like and the main thing for me is keeping everything nice and tidy so when I built the Viv I put all of the wires in and done all of the uh, mounting points as I was building with all of the lighting and heating placed on the panel before I put it on the Viv so it made it really easy um, so now if we move into the fauna and the flora I have 
live plants in here I have the jade plant which is a really really lovely succulent I have a type of aloe um, this is all of these will be succulents so succulents and cacti are really good for hog noses because it gives the best drought tolerance to still have plants and with hog noses you don't want a lot of moisture and then I've got a couple of echeverias and another couple of aloes here so you can see I've planted out a few bits and they're doing really well so far um, the purple one which is here that's actually came back from looking very very dilapidated and uh, the one next to it is making a comeback too it doesn't doesn't normally look so sorry for itself um, you can see for the cleanup crew I leave some of the um, waste from the hog nose and I also place in fresh fruits and different uh, supplemental foods like I went through in my last video um, in terms of cleanup crew if they are playing ball they'll be under here I have some A paracai which are armadillidium species and they're doing quite well they're settling in you can also see some springtails um, which are really good you won't get many springtails in an environment like this but if you can keep some alive it's always beneficial the other thing I do have is some millworms so you have millworms in here and unfortunately the beetles will be hiding away at the moment because they are mainly active during like the night time but I do have millworm beetles and I do see some pupas every so often which shows me that the millworms are doing well and converting so hopefully they'll breed and keep that population going the same as the isopods would um, you can see I'm using an organic compost for substrate which is really nice and fibrous it holds quite good burrows it's really good for the digging um, the hog nose is really enjoying it and it also creates a nice humidity gradient throughout the depth of soil um, in terms of decor I just have this skull she really likes going through the skull and sort of exploring in it um, you know you see her going through it every so often she will go under and climb over this piece of wood and then I've got the two hides at the back the crawl and the hut um, this hide she basically uses as an entrance to a burrow which is really great and it's kind of like their natural behavior so they will go sort of under a rock and then they'll make their own sort of tunnel system and get into their fossorial nature um, at the moment she is actually in shed um, the last time I saw her she was in here and as you can see I won't bother her but she is just in her hot hide um, and she will be coming into blue soon so yeah that's my hog nose setup um, one last thing before I go I've put this weather stripping on um, this is mainly to stop with the added plinth um, the snake can go in between the glass and go down and I don't want that to happen so I've placed this self adhesive strip and I've also used screws to make sure that everything is stuck down the main thing with this bioactive setup is she will traipse dirt into the water bowl so it's really critical to keep an eye and sort of keep tabs on the water bowl and uh, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm replacing it daily and emptying it into the um, substrate below so it gives a really nice humid area for her to go if she wants to um, the markings that are on the water bowl this is quite an old water bowl so what you're seeing is the abrasion over time through cleaning and through maintenance and I keep it quite shallow because she likes to soak in it and otherwise she would just be tipping it all out herself so thanks very much guys and I'll catch you in the next one